Your life. Good. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the June 15th Board Selections meeting for the town of Effingham. We're just finishing up the um, review of the reading material for the week. We will start the meeting in a few minutes. Call to order. The selectman's introduction. When he asked me to my right, I'm Chuck Fuller, the chair. Uh, Tom Hart to my left. And when we get to the public speaking part of the day, people will be limited to five minutes for statements, comments, questions, whatever. And my very next thing is would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? <laughs> The United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> so, when you came in, you kind of noticed we basically tried to get rid of all the miscellaneous reading stuff done prior to the 9 a.m. meetings. So, you have to say, just reading took one minute. Um, so that's what we were just finishing up when you came through the door. Um, signature folders. Uh, I make a motion to uh, pass the meeting minutes of June 8, 2021. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Four aye. 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 Make a motion to pass the work session minutes of June 2nd, 2021. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Four aye. 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 And we had the 2021 MS 232 that we had to sign. We have one of the three proposals for RFP environmental to do the asbestos abatement at the library. Um, we're not signing anything on that today because there's actually two more proposals, proposals coming in. Uh, Pineo Environmental and uh, Enviro Advantage out of Epping. And for those that don't know, when um, we had the, architect, the historic architect in there a um, month and a half, two months back, and then going through the building. They really wanted to look at the condition of the ceiling, about the ceiling tile. And when we got into the children's room, which was the old boil room, above the ceiling tiles on the entire wall and the ceiling is asbestos, which needs to be removed. And it's going to go through a special process to do that. The testing of that has already been done, so they know exactly what they need to remove. Those test results were now given to um, three different firms that Chris Garcia, our project manager, is pointing out. And we're expecting to have that back in a couple of weeks. But when we get that back, the library has asked us not to do the physical work until after the kids are back in school in September. So we, even though we will have decided who we're going to go with, it will basically be um September when we got there. Okay. And that's the only place you found any upstairs and down? Yep. 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 Yeah, they, they crawl under the building. That's how we found the dollar for the same the same meeting. Yeah. Um we have uh three yield tax on timber cuts and one notice of intent to cut. Uh the manifest this week is later than last week. Uh, make a motion to approve the manifest in the amount of thirty-two thousand four hundred three dollars and sixty-nine cents. So, right here, second. All those in favor, full aye. 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 All right. Mail folder. Um, we, as a result of being able to open up this week, 
Um, as everybody may know, the governor lifted everything as of last Friday. Um, and until they decide what they're going to be able to do with Zoom type meetings going forward, we're opening back up. The office is not going to require face coverings to come into the office. They will ask people to socially distance if you're not coming in with somebody. And on Tuesdays, the tax office still will be by, by appointment only. That is Deanna's decision. We as a selectman do not control Deanna's hours or how she runs that office. She's agreed to kind of map the hours. So the daytime hours for the most part of the Tuesday are the same thing. We're no longer open on Friday. We are open on Wednesday. So we move the number of hours from Friday to Wednesday. So we're Monday to Thursday with that. Excuse me, Chairman Fuller. I believe that Deanne is remaining everything by appointment. And there's an advantage to that because if you're behind someone that has nine cars to register, you don't know how long you're waiting. So I believe everything, everything by everything's okay. by appointment with the town clerk. I'll stand corrected on that one. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, the other thing is you'll notice on the outside door, there's a little um, signage piece. It says if somebody coming into the building wants to wear a mask, they can do that. And while they're dealing with their business in here, if they would like any of the staff to wear a mask, all they got to do is ask and the staff will put on a mask. Um, we've got some people that are on oxygen and have other uh, respiratory type things in down and, and other medical conditions that they warrant that. In addition to that, um, we are going to, in the zoning office, continue to make that a uh, mask required to go into that building. I'm not going to get into the details of it because it's HIPAA related, but suffice to say, we'll review that in a couple months to see if that situation improves. Hopefully, we can get rid of the mask in there at a later day. Um, the other thing that was in the mail was uh, Rebecca's suggestion on her hours being open with the same hours she had before, 4 30 to 6 on Tuesdays. Do we have any? Issues with that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, Audrey, would you let mm -hmm. let Rebecca know that Tuesdays four thirty to six will be good. We also in the mailbag had a gratitude letter from the Freedom Food Pantry. Um, we 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 meaning the town collected two hundred and ninety nine food items uh, to be donated to the Freedom Freedom Food Pantry during the uh, elections. Um, they're really gracious for that because we actually, at the end, does have the largest percentage of users on that particular institution. We also received some correspondence for charter communications. Um, they're basically putting on their sales hat with a lot of the federal grant money and state grant money that's coming down the road. Part of that will be dedicated for expansion of broadband in communities, particularly rural communities. We have no clue what it's going to look like yet. We don't know how much money we're going to get. Um, we're actually doing the homework on that right now to determine what we may be able to submit for. Uh, broadband could be part of it. Um, and it really depends upon what the pot will be. We do know the pot's going to be divided over this year and next year. So whatever number they decide to give Epic Man will get half of this year and half of it next year. When we get more information, we can reach out to Charter. We'll probably also reach out to Consolidated Communications. Um, and the last item that came in, and I was just showing it before uh, the session, uh, HEB Engineering has submitted an emergency authorization request to the Department of Environmental Services for temporary repairs at the Bailey Road culvert. Uh, more to come on that as we have more information coming. Um, 91A request, Irene Reardon, um, one of the list of the projects Mike Holland is overseeing. And I understand that letter has gone out, right? That's okay. good. So I mean, should have it. Um, administrator and selectman's comments. We'll start with Audrey. I believe I have everything done with the signing of the 232 DRAs up to date. I'm still working on SAM, and my other major project right now is Primex and confirming all of the town's assets, vehicles buildings, equipment. So I'll be reaching out to all of the facility heads, um, Randy, Joe. Everything's in the CIP manual because Grace and I did it last fall. Nice, thank you. So it's all, it's all, <laughs> it may not be in the order that they want it for that formal document. We need to keep a mm -hmm. reminder. 
but the list is there. So. All right, terrific. So that's my project the next two days. Um, have you had a chance to read that or view that Barbara the video from NHMA? No. Okay. Um, have you have you done a chance to read it? Okay. So I think what we'll do is that the uh, next one we'll add a special work session at the end of this and we'll pop it up on the screen and we'll watch it. Um, I have not had a chance to get to it either, but we only have a, I believe, a 60 day window. To identify what it is we're going to submit. And at this point, we're not even sure what we can submit. So we'll need to do that. So I really do with that on the next mm -hmm. I should I should update you with the audit <coughs> went really well last week. The auditors oh, yeah. were quite pleased. This is the CPA firm out of Concord that audits the town books. Correct. So I anticipate that we'll have um, an audit report maybe six or eight months earlier than last year. Oh, so, yeah. And um, they were happy they were here and done relatively quickly. Very few follow up items. Yeah, perfect. Like that even better. Few, fewer follow up items means we got the records. Right. Okay. Good. Anything else? Okay. Tom. Uh, just a couple of road items here. Uh, I spoke to Evans Brothers on Cemetery Road yesterday. They're supposedly bringing in loads. I haven't got a chance to get back up to the cemetery. Uh, supposed to bring up a few loads up to there and bring that out. Also, we're going to drop uh, a load off of the Larry Valley Preserve, as requested. Uh, but it's all from the concern, so yes. Can we just wear? They're going to spread some of that. Somebody spread it. They can drop both the cemetery road in that one. That's what they're going to do. That's what I was told they were going to do. Got right. uh, a call from Concerned Citizen on Elm Street. It was uh, a lot of broken up uh, black top at the edge of it driveway and then leading up to a driveway when I looked at it. Absolutely. Got in touch with that. I don't have the road contractor again. He went up and looked at it, and we'll be picking it up on his way in. That's what I was told. Is there any patching or anything? No, it looks like it's from old patch, and I would just push the side of the road. And then, but it was a good amount. I took pictures of it. <laughs> and that's it on this one. Okay. <clears throat> um, when the um, meeting with Rebecca, we had, I mentioned maybe. Some of these people could get a dumpster from the North Country Recycling or so checked into it. They don't do it for nothing, but it's Effingham, it's uh, $295 for a 30 yard. They can have it two weeks. And he said, usually, uh, if they get good junk in it and get it pretty full, the uh, money they get back outweighs the $295 fee. So they make some money. On it. So that's a that's one avenue that uh, they can go to. And at the transfer station, I go to Woodpex, but um, on the back side of the landfill is uh, the invasion of Japanese not wood, not buying wood. That was called, looks like bamboo. Yeah, not wood. Yeah, not wood. So uh, I went over the tractor supply, got a spray and some rusty on. So the guys are gonna spray that in the, in the rains over. And <clears throat> what was the other uh, thing? I think that's uh yeah, I think that's it for right now. So I made a note to follow up on Rebecca's comments last week. I think we ought to provide three or four different, three or four different vendors that people have been available to have <coughs> trash junk, other things removed from the property. We can provide a list uh, from around and it won't be an inclusive list and just look at everybody's in the private local area and put on um, so they, We've had some people that have had a problem removing junk cars, so we're going to deal with it. Um, and which is more um, senior age, and um, we've also had a request, at least one request on helping get help to remove just the junk on the property. 
on the debris and left there for the year. So we'll provide a capability for information. We're not going to be able to fund anything at this point to do any of that if somebody needs help. So uh, at this point, we need more information only. Thank you, Lenny. Um, one of the things that I want to bring up today, I when I got my mail last night, I was uh, I was out most of the weekend uh, down visiting my grandson, so I was not on the computer. Um, JP Pest Control. We had originally reached out to them a few weeks back regarding the tick, inf tick infestations at the transfer station, particularly the area of the white goods storage bin area. <laughs> Um, if I said thousands of ticks in that little tiny area, I would be light in my numbers. Uh, when we reached out to JP Pest Control, they said they were done doing their spraying for ticks for this particular year. Um, I received this email over the, the weekend that basically said they're back in the spraying business this year. And I can only suspect it's because of the tick problems around. To give you an example, um, when the gentleman were removing uh, some of the stuff down there the other day, uh, two weeks ago, the Freons, when they take them off, they took off some of the panels and the entire inside, the entire inside of the panel was covered in ticks. So you couldn't tell what it was on the inside of the panel because it was completely covered in ticks. Um, when Mark and Brad removed the white goods this weekend and put them in the dumpster, uh, which is really well, by the way. Um, they got completely covered with ticks. So we're going to basically look to spray it, and it's $175. JP Pest Control is the town pest control company. Um, they do this building, all well, the town building relative to like CVS and other things. Uh, as well as transfer station. Okay. Um, I will say, from my standpoint, literally, my late week, uh, I really wasn't around um, from that standpoint. So let's go to uh, do we have anything under old business, new business? Okay, um, we'll have the chief come in, uh, but I think he's planning on coming in at 10 o'clock. Basically, oh, <laughs> oh you, you suck it, yeah. you were in that ninja uniform. I've been here for a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, were you able to get your stats? That so, yes and no. Only partially. So I, I was going to stats for you for a certain month of May, um, but I'm running into some, some computers who's going to have those to be completed by next week. Okay. Because that's okay. Yep. Um, and what we'll do is I want to go in forward once we get those monthly reports yep. in from you and the fire department and EMS and zoning and whatever. We're actually going to post those on the internet Perfect. underneath yeah. the applicable area. So yeah. if somebody wants to learn see what's going on in town, they can go through that and do that. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, you're pulling stats from county, state, and yeah. us. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Um, any updates on um, training for K9? Yeah, I was actually just going to mention that. So. Um, his training is going very well. Um, down at the school, he's had a very impressive. They're hoping to have him track and certified by, I think, and now the end of August. He's doing so well in training. Initially, he's going to be November or December, but he's doing so well. They think he'll be certified tracking a lot sooner. Um, and then they're going to start into the black certifications. So he's doing pretty successful well. Have you reached out to Patty Morrissey, the principal, or you or Sean? Uh, having a dog over there? Not recently, but we okay. were in, in contact with her before, okay. and that is something Sean's been doing. Okay, yeah, because Gracie traded his emails with, with Patty over yep. last week, and she said she'd love to have him down there Yes. Uh, at the school yep. uh, a day or so. Yeah, or two. Yep. From that standpoint. Yep. And I know he attended the library, yep. the first the library, library for the hour. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wednesdays at 10. He did. Um, yep. and and he was, from what I understand, he was super well and it was, yeah. it was good. Yeah, he was happy to do it and he was real up there. Okay, super. All right, we're at public comment time. When you uh, are recognized, please state your name and your address because we have to record that for the 80 minutes. Linda? 
Edwards. Yes, uh, Linda Edwards, uh, obviously for her. Uh, at the June 8th meeting, Mr. Fuller said, people should call the office if they're in need of information. I was in need of information about our granite, so I did call the office and uh, wasn't given an answer right then. Uh, I waited an hour, hour and a half, didn't receive any answer, so I decided I would call the Attorney General's office to ask for advice because I'm, you know, none of us knew this rant was going to be moved. So, you know, we wanted some answers. So I called them and they told me to call my local authority. And I did, did that. And I filled out a report and I brought it up out back here for the police department. And they said they would investigate. Later that day, I got a message from Audrey on my phone that said uh, that the granite and the waste material would be sorted uh, and got in and would be taken to Hobshaw for cleaning and sorting. And that was on page nine of the contract. Uh, which selectmen? Did every selectman here know? That that granite was going to Hobsburg. I didn't know it was going in, but I was also told it was mixed all together. <clears throat> so. still I, Linda, I explained that in detail last week, so you can watch the tape. I did. I was Read watching. The minutes. I was watching. Okay. What I'm seeing here is a lack of transparency. Even when the other two selectmen do not know what is going on in this town. I don't, I think you need to tell people what's going on. And I finished my, okay. Uh, so transparency, I don't think happened because I mean, even two setting selectmen didn't know this, then that should be happening. Then I called the attorney general's office, they told me to do this. And I did it, and it seemed like it was frowned upon that I did that. And I am saying that I believe that's my right, and I will continue to do that if I don't get answers <clears throat> that everyone in town should know what's going on. The other thing I'd like to say is you read a letter that wasn't signed. I think that gives that more importance than it should have because letters that come to my home they're not signed go in the trash we can't do that uh, and i think when we voted in march we voted for a selectman to be out if our votes are going to count and he is still doing the jobs that you three should be doing, then what's the sense in voting in the town of Bethany? And any letter I write will be signed. And that's what I wanted to say. We've covered almost everything that you have discussed in previous meetings, and it's on tape for those that want to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's part of the written minutes. It's too bad we did not have a time. The letter. That came in unsigned. I had no intention of reading, except the party that was the aggrieved party by name in that document asked the office to have that read verbatim. And that is the reason why I read that particular note, because it was totally untrue and false, but it was a libel, slander, character assassination attempt on one of our citizens. So he asked us. And that's why I read it. So it's on tape, it's also verbatim in the notes. Thank you, Linda. Uh -huh. Anybody else? Jory. Hi, uh, Jory. Uh, Jenny, uh, 234 Granite Road. I, um, I, I apologize, I didn't catch your name. Jory. Jory. Or Jenny. <clears throat> um, 
the first thing that I want to say, did anyone ask permission from the landowners on either side of the bridge? Uh, if they could put um, split stone on their property. You got a wetland immediately to the left. So the answer was no on that one because it wasn't going to go in the wetland. If you go back and read the contract, which the verbiage of that contract has been put out there, and I know somebody in this room has requested a full copy of the contract, so it's there. It was not a town responsibility. You're not as answering. Yes, I am. It wasn't a town responsibility to do that. The debris removal by contract was totally Hanson Bridge. Had nothing to do with the town. It, no, you're not answering the question. <clears throat> I don't did, did lead on that. Yep, yeah, go ahead. Did anyone in this office ask permission to stockpile the split stone on the premise that it would be removed? once the bridge was open. Plus, on the other side of the bridge, the dump side, there was also split stone. And that could have just as easily be, be taken to the dump. Yes, but you missed the point. The point was the town had no skin in the game in this because, the written, yeah. because the written contract, Linda and Jory, yes. said that the bridge contractor was responsible for that removal. It was a standard contract that the USDA had had us use as part of that. Now, from a granite standpoint, I know the granite's a big deal. I've got that. There already had been an agreement to split that granite apart from the other debris before all the crash storms started on social media, before all the calls started going to the police department, department, you know, the attorney general's office. That would be me. That's okay. I, I appreciate it, You know, you've got that right to do that. This is a democracy. Absolutely. But the key point was, and we talked about it in last week's meeting, when we get to a future contract, it looks like we've got one coming up from Bailey Road, one of the opportunities we will have in that contract is to make sure when we get to the debris removal part, we add in clauses that basically say we want the granite safe. Because there is some granite that's fallen in the water down there. Didn't the contract um no didn't Lawrence's contract for um, Stevens Road Bridge, why did that granite have to go to the dump? The U we were following a USDA grant, not a Lawrence contract, a USDA contract. The one had a Lawrence contract. Or, it was sorry, a, town. A, a town contract, but even then, for that bridge. Whoever constructed that document, water over the dam. You've got new people sitting here that weren't part of, well, he might have been, but I don't think so, where we're not part of that particular gig. Appreciate the fact that people want grant. We know going forward, because we've already talked about it, we will figure out a way to document any future bridge contracts that are being replaced or being uh, renovated any of the granite will be as part of the contract, safe for the town. Oh. Right now, the granite is still safe for the town. I've got pictures of the granite piles that have been safe for the town. So we got the granite. And there was never any kind of an intent to steal the granite, as was no. alleged by a lot of people. That, that's what, uh, not what I'm. So, but no, the, the town had no reason to ask anybody on either side of that road about putting debris on their property because the town was not responsible 
for the removal and disposal of that debris in this contract. I get it. The next contract will be worded different. In this contract, it was a standard contract for the government. They had to approve it and all the language in it. All right. Um, another question um, on the, I believe it was the uh, May 18th meeting um, in the minutes. Um, you said, uh, or um, Pardon it. Um, yeah, May 18th meeting, it was stated in the minutes that it was a unanimous decision to um, keep Mike on. Yep. I don't believe it was unanimous. Well, go back. I mean, go yeah. back and look at go back and look at the tape. Go back and look at the minutes. It was a three-zero decision to have Mr. Cahalan still working on it. Lenny, and I asked Lenny the following meeting when the subject came up again if he wanted to change his vote, and he said no. He did not want to change his vote. I offered him the chance because I know that somebody has some clarity issues on that. So the following meeting, we did it again, Jory. We didn't have to take a vote because nobody wanted to change their previous vote. You want to change the vote now? I don't remember voting, uh, Mike. I remember you saying we voted for the, follow the selectman's procedures. And that's what I voted for. I don't remember ever voting for Mike. I handed out an entire document, I saw the document, which you got and read. We talked about it. We mentioned the project, the total project on there, and that Mike was going to be continuing with that. We took a vote for him to continue to do that. Is that was that the selectman's procedures? That's what I believe I voted on. Well, I don't remember. It was, it was like it was an outline of here's what how it will work based on my discussion with the NHMA because it was really clear. We, at any point in time, if a citizen wants to volunteer their time, they can do that. Yeah, I, I understand. We that. can have them lead any project lead, meaning they can control it, lead any project that we want them to, with a provision. They've got to report to us. The, the reporting element has to be to the selectman. And when it comes to a decision, there might be a selectman decision that has to be referred to us. So, selectmen approve, selectmen oversight, reporting to selectmen as a volunteer. That's what the requirement is by NHMA. That's what that entire document said that we read. We can pull it out, we can put it up on the website, not a problem. I have no problem, Chair. Full transparency, we'll put it up. Because it was really, really clear what the intent was of that entire document. And it was to continue Mike running the projects that he had all the experience and data with. Uh, I guess I misunderstood the, uh, what was the vote. I remember Solomon's procedure. And I'm good. So do you want to revote? Uh, it's probably not going to change anything. Huh? That's correct. Yeah. I mean, but if you want to be on the record of no, we can do that. I have no problem with that. Okay. We vote. All right. Do you can you pull that document? Do you have it in the other room? I do. I don't know if you want to address Ms. Kirkwood's um, comment in the meantime. Did all three selectmen physically sign the contract for Snow Road Bridge? Who were the selectmen at the time of signing? Did all three selectmen actually read the contract? Fuller and Hart signed the contract. How are they saying? I 
and I did not personally read the contract because I know it was a USDA approved document that we weren't going to make any changes to anyway. And facing the federal government and the state government in that regard. You want to call that or just? Yeah, bring, bring up copies of it. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Darlene, I believe at that meeting that was referenced where we had that discussion on this document, on tape, I asked that that document be included with the minutes. Uh, Can we go back and actually just read that in that area? If okay. that's true, we'll take that physical document. And <laughs> the document from the one, the one I can have the May 18th. It's actually the document I heard in that discussion with the legal counsel that I Okay. okay. Um, And if anybody else wants a copy of the contract, it's a large file, but it is digital and can be uh, called the office, selectman's office, and we'd be more than happy to provide it to you. Um, could I ask you a question? Sure. Was the, was the furniture ever graded also? I didn't get up there. Uh, I, I was going to go in between the two meetings today. Uh, you see, I talked to them yesterday in the morning and said they were on their way bringing loads up. Uh, <clears throat> I said, I haven't seen it yet, so I just wanted to show you. Well, I need you to call and take a ride by today and let you know. Thank you. Well, they were picking up some of the dirt piles yesterday. Yes. Yes, I so see. I don't know how much gravel they were all over. Yeah. Um, also, the canopy is growing in. I think Bob did that, Bob Valls, about five years ago. Uh, it seems to be growing in quite a bit. It's on the cemetery road, then? Yeah. A lot of the roads are growing in. Yeah, I know. But that one, you know, it only gets rated like once a year, maybe. Safe. We're lucky. Can't get graded at all. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. Jory? Um, did Dave uh, speak to you? Because I I had spoken to him. Uh, Who again, Jory? Dave. Um, uh, Strap. Um, on, um, he was going to find out. Uh, The uh, person who did the roads in Parsonsville uh, and had a, um, uh, for the lack of better, uh, an industrial size um, over the uh, um, over the guardrail farm. So it took all the tree limbs everything. and everything. I mean, you could shred everything plus uh, mold of grass also. Um, Dave and I trade on emails and phone calls like almost daily. I don't remember that discussion. Okay. I can no, follow up that. with him on that one. Yeah. Because it would be nice to be able to get somebody to come back in and be able to do that on a lot of the roads. Just as Linda said, and Linda said, they're all growing in pretty good shape. Right. And I, I understand uh, the person who uh, did do it um, moved to Florida. So um, if anybody purchased his equipment 
Um, you know, and has, has picked up the. Uh, Do you know if that equipment still exists and it's not being used? I I don't know that. I mean, I, you know, I, I have no 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 idea. No, we were but, uh, okay. Yeah, if you could, you know, please check into that. Uh, that would that would be good. There's a guy right now doing 25 for the state. Yeah. I don't know. Is it what is it a state blaster with a state tractor? <laughs> yeah, I don't think they don't they don't do it themselves. This looks like a private contract. Oh, private? Okay. Yeah. And it, it, the idea with the state, they bought that to motor and the guy running it, uh, I don't know what he thought he had, but uh, fell a couple of trees right down on it. So, so it cost them quite a bit of money to uh, get everything fixed. So. Will you go by that work being done by them right now? Can you stop and ask that question for a contact number? Um, Okay, so the document that I basically pulled together, thank you very much, Gary. Any good question? Okay. Lawrence? I have a problem with the snow bridge. Yep, go ahead. That's the biggest pollution problem that this town has ever seen. I fed pictures, a thousand feet down the food, and it looks like a drip road. Now, in the DE, uh, the DE command of the environmental services specifies what they're supposed to do. And that's tacked on a telephone pole right now. They didn't follow any of those. They, they, every one of them, they violated it. Now, we just talked about the split phone. Now, that split phone and all of the debris that come out of them, out of that water around the coast. It's supposed to be put in work, sediment station on site and dewatered before it was removed from, from the site. That didn't happen. We don't even have a sediment station at that. They're supposed to have two of them. They were supposed to pump that dirty water up into a sediment station before it went back into the river. Didn't do that. Before they even started, they were supposed to put up two fences, 240 feet. None of it up there. That was supposed to be done for even, even done a thing. This company has violated everything that's on that committee. They didn't do one thing that's on that committee. Have you read that command? No. Have you read it, Tom? No, sir. I read it. The one on the poll. Wait. Did they do what, what it says on that committee? No. What are we going to do about it? As I told you the night you laid it on my porch. Call DES. I did. Report it. I did. Send them all the pictures you want. And I'm willing to take that on from a town standpoint because I got a guy that's got experience with over 100 bridges, deals with DES every single week, understands what it takes to deal in the water. And I'm comfortable with this being overseen by an outside engineering firm that we're meeting what we should be doing. So I understand you disagree. And that's what I told you the night you landed on my doorstep. Call DES. Do whatever you got to do. I called DES eight times. I can't. I can't I tell DES can't. what to do. You are the selectman in this town. You should be watching what's happening in our rivers. I called, put, put the conservation over there and let them look at it. They wasn't notified that when you think you're going in, they were supposed to be notified of that. They wasn't notified. Was that the town policy? Yes, we'll put the contract. Okay. No, what, I didn't see a pump that night. They will pump that dirty water up into it. Lawrence, I'm comfortable. Let me let me say this one more time okay. on take, because I've already said it. I'm totally comfortable that the engineering firm overseeing it and the bridge contractor is meeting the requirements they need to from DES. I know you disagree with what they're doing and how they're doing it. I got that. But at this stage of the game, I'm comfortable with it. 
So unless DDS comes at us and says, oops, we got a problem, I'm comfortable. Well, I got a, uh, the cement meter is on the DDS, and they didn't follow anything. So who, who's in charge of that? Um, Nobody? From an oversight standpoint, the engineering firm was watching what was going on, and they were comfortable with it. Okay. And so they were an objective third party, so we didn't have to get involved with he said, she said within the town. It was by design, objective third party overseeing. I had the conversations. Have you seen anything that would cause us to have to stop the project? No. We put up the pictures from the first week's worth of stuff. I, hopefully, today I get the next week's worth of stuff. It's going up on the website so everybody can see it. The engineers are taking pictures at every stage of, they're down there every day. <clears throat> so I understand what you're saying. Got, a, got an issue, contact the state. And that's where it's going to stand. We're not doing any more here because I'm comfortable with what's going on out there. And if these two guys want to override me, they can, but that's their choice. You want to override me? The sheet pile they put in is out six inches and 24 feet. Uh, we want to accept that kind of shoddy work. Well, Lawrence, you know, I don't think you built 100 bridges in your career. I know you built quite a few. But even you told me you've never built a bridge like Snow Road Bridge when you tried to get my vote early on. You told me I've never built one that it couldn't be that hard to build. Well, guess what? I well, never told you that. Yeah, you did to my face, but that's okay. Because there's no, I there's no record of that. I would admit that I oh, told yeah, That's okay. That's okay. From this standpoint, I'm comfortable with the years of experience of a guy who deals bridge building and deals with DES every day in his companies that he's dealing with. Understands what needs to be done. And I can live with that. And if it's a case where you can't, go through the process. Take it to whoever you want to. And come at it. I don't mind that because I'm comfortable. I really am. No, I don't need to be an expert in bridge building. No. We hired a bridge builder for that. We hired engineers for that. Mike's not a bridge builder as he's been described. Mike is a coordinator and project manager, which is exactly what we've hired him to do in this scenario, or oh, not hired, I'm sorry. He's, ah, volunteered. he's volunteering his time. Ah, hired is a word of, yes, we've got to be agreeable to it. He can walk away from that at any time he wants, and we have to assume what's going on. I will tell you this, because of the way in the last two and a half years, we built the Board of Selectmen, we designated certain parts and certain projects to each Selectman as a lead. Mike was the lead on all those projects. When it was time to make decisions, presentations were made by vendors, presentations were made by Mike, and we made a decision. I had no intention of becoming an expert when I've hired experts to do the job. I don't need to. We're not talking anything about an expert. We're talking about shoddy work. No, we're talking about experts in the business. I got pictures here. It shows. It's okay. Send your pictures to Concord. I don't need to send it. Don't think we're done. No more. This discussion's over. Linda, you already had your five minutes. Irene? Hey, thanks. I said five minutes up front. You've already had more than five. Irene? Who pays your salaries? Who pays your salaries? The dollar and 72 cents an hour, I mean? Um, you have to talk louder than I'm dead. The dollar and 72 cents an hour, I make. the town pays. You're overpaid. That's number one. Yep. Number two, we pay your salary if there is displeasure about something and you're comfortable with it. It's fine that you're comfortable. You have a job to do. You have to look again. You have to look again. You're wrong. And I totally agree with you that then I've got a responsibility. It. No, I've got a responsibility. I know that. My responsibility is to the entire town not a small segment of people that have an itch. Do you want us to find a lot more people? We could do that. I know, you know, find me 750 people and you've got my attention. We've done it before. And that's okay. But I'm gonna tell you right now, there's a small, what I've seen in the last six to eight months is a small group of people. 
I got it. They're you know, what? We're the town. The people sitting in this room, this is the town of Bethlehem. And my the son. only reason there are only a few people in this room is because the meeting is at 9 a.m. If this meeting were 5.30 at night, you'd have a larger crowd. Good guarantee. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is a sad situation, and it's a sad presentation. I, I, and, and I don't have a comment. And I'm okay with the that. fact you don't like it. That, that you know, runs right off. I don't care. Oh, I, I I'm looking out for 1,500 people in this town, not a small segment of the town. And as much as some of the things I have to agree with and do, I personally don't agree with and do, my job is to look out for the entire town, not a small segment of the town. Watch my letters. A-okay. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, when you send them up to the paper, you can send them in here to Audrey. She'll print them so they actually show up. We'll read them. I know Audrey's story. Dory, <laughs> um, last question. Do you uh, plan on um, changing the hours uh, back to uh, 5.30 or 5? Uh, we have talked about it. If you read or listened to any of the tapes in the last few no, weeks? No, no, I have not. We, we said last week we would do some homework to see what was going on around us. I took that on. I decided to go visit my grandson for the first time in 18 months this last weekend. So I didn't do anything. Um, that's why my list today is rather short. Yep. No. But over the next week or two, we plan on looking at towns around us, taking a look at that, factoring in the different meetings we've got to attend. The budget committee meetings and things like that. I'm not in favor of moving the budget committee meeting to a different night other than Tuesday. But I understand the feedback that is coming out that people would like to see a different time. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 As soon as I do the research and you share it in here, we'll, we'll have that hopefully within the next week or two. I yeah. think so. Yes, ma'am. Green Jewelry Plantation Road. Perfect. Why do we have an election to vote money in and get my out? To be out. Well, he's still raised involved in everything we do. Yeah, because he's got the institutional knowledge and the nine projects he's dealing with. And you guys don't? So he's a no, big, we don't. Listen, you didn't listen to what I said a little while ago. He's a big build, a great build up, or he knows the He's not a great build why do we have an engineer if we got Mike there? Mike's not an engineer. <laughs> That's right. But Mike has to coordinate the five different parties that are part of that entire project. The state, the federal government. Yeah, well, it requires a coordinator. And I'm already doing 30, 40 hours a week for the town already. I don't have the extra 30 to 40 hours a week to do it. So at this stage of the game, yep. Tom's doing roads and bridges already. He's working with Mike on these projects. You agree, Tom? From what I've seen, I'm you know, I'm not a build uh, bridge builder. Did I tell you what we do? Sure. Right. He is the pilot. Can't stand the I'm not the third world. I think this is great. These are what they call the concrete over. Yeah. You've already done it. I'm going to see it. I already had a discussion. This is the sheet panel, which is permanent, but not covered up. In 24 feet, that three panel drops six inches. But where does the cap? Doesn't the cap cover these? So that's they're going to be inside the. Oh, that's the side that faces the river, which is open.
So what you're saying is all those should have been in a straight line and just look down. Well, if I pulled you a concrete wall and it was out six inches, you pay me for it? But is that acting like rebar inside the concrete, I guess? No, no, that's that's, that's, that's going to be the finished wall. They had a one sided concrete wall there. The pants, sheet pan is the other side. So that won't be seen, they'll be in the concrete, right? No, no they put against it. The outside of that, you will see. You will see. Yeah, this is all concrete now. Yep. All right. That's all right, John. I know. But I'm going to try. Can I say one thing, Mr. Fuller? Yes. Thank you. Um, we paid HEB. How many thousands? Ninety-four thousand four hundred. My question is, why did he not follow the? Plans. Because to me, when you don't follow the plans that we spent this kind of money on, there's something really wrong. That's a very Thank you, I've already I've already explained it more than I once. know, but I just like, wanted to say that. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yep. Never, never Anybody else? Okay. Back to the original document. So the document that I pulled together after talking with legal counsel for the NHNA that we dealt with on May 18th talked about how the selectmen could continue to use a volunteer working on projects for the town. The guidance that was given by NHNA, and I'm going to read you the, the four bullet points. These are my words, but it was okay. their thoughts. Okay. Determine the persons or person or persons who will be filling the different project roles. That's a named body. Define the degree of involvement and oversight by the Board of Selection, a reporting process. Define the goal of the relationship process for each project item. Who is reporting to whom? So the project person has to report to the selectman. Create a project name for the different projects that will be worked on to provide clarity. When that was done, there were nine. And we're, I'm sorry, the day that we were talking, I said 13. I was going off the top of my head. I didn't have a form. You're forgiven, Sandy. Let me speak again. Snow Road Bridge replaced the entire follow through project management work in the total replacement of the bridge. Vendors. USDA, Hanson Construction, HEB Engineers, Town Road Agent, Paving Contractor. We don't have to worry about the paving contractor because the engineer is responsible for paving the bridge. Pine River Road Emergency Culvert Repair. Bailey Road Culvert Replacement. So in the Pine River Road Emergency Repairs, we had to follow through with additional engineering after we put in that replacement culvert because DES required us to have a permanent solution to that particular waterway. I will tell you the town was fortunate that it was an emergency because it's going to cost us less than 75 or 80 grand to get it done. And if we were doing a new box culvert, which is what would be required there, would be several hundred thousand dollars. What is left? The DDS approved only a month or so ago the three 24 inch, what they're calling overflow culverts. It's the 500 year flood kind of thing that are going to have to be in the road. So there will be three trenches, culverts put in, let that settle for just a little bit and then they will be paved over um, from that standpoint so they won't be just bare dirt. Bailey Road color replacement. This was part of the $75,000 grant that Mike got in the engineering and the town voted, I believe, not this last meeting, but the meeting before to approve up to 900 and some odd dollars of interest. So we got 75 grand and it cost us 900 plus dollars to get that money. The engineers have been working on that with the state and the, in the four or five parties that have been involved with that because this is where two different parties of the state because of the lakes and the rivers is totally involved with it. 
And this afternoon, actually at two o'clock, we're getting our delivery presentation on that. Uh, here's what they're recommending we do within that replacement process. We did have to file an emergency DES permit that's outside of the replacement culvert. It was brought to our attention. We've got good pictures of it that by the guardrails between the guardrail and the outside cement uh, abutment area over the culverts inside of that cement abutment area there's large chunks that have just been way and came in and i'm not going to holler I'm, I'm talking as loud as i can i mean um so from that standpoint we have had an emergency permit filed we're going to have to do a temporary repair, which was not budgeted, which will come out of road monies that were targeted for other things for the year. We're just going to do less because we've got to go in and do that temporary repair. Um, we don't know what that's going to look like yet. At the same time, the second grant window has opened and Mike Cahalane has started the application process for approximately $140,000 in a state grant, it'll be a matching grant by the now, to replace that bridge area next year in 2022. Has to be voted on at the town meeting, but a lot of work's got to go into it before you get to next year. Transfer station, used oil grant program. Mike went to the state and got $2,500 grant for us to be able to create a, an area at the transfer station to collect used oil once again. We did get $2,500, which went as part of our 50% match against the work that's been done. We now need to purchase the container items and basically get those in there. And Lenny will be overseeing that additional $2,500 grant because we can get it every single year. So we need to basically make that application again within the next month. Calcium chloride was done um, from that standpoint. Road crack sealing is underway uh, from a planning standpoint to do that. The vendor we've used is RCH uh, and others so that that is being looked at at this point. No decisions have been made. Route 153 and Huntress Bridge Road reconstruction, where the triangle is at the foot of the hill. The New Hampshire DOT has agreed that for safety reasons, they will consider a change of that particular entry onto Huntress Bridge Road and eliminating the island. Um, there's nothing that's been decided on that one. There hasn't been any engineering on that one. DES is looking at what they may be able to do and how much of it they may be able to cover in cost. Fire station number two parking lot. We need to consider if we can come up with any funds, no guarantee we're gonna be able to do it, with the fire station on front down, down center Eppingham is to basically repave that area that comes out of the uh, doors because there's been some weight that has pushed some stuff down uh, relative to the, the pavement, as well as painting around the side of the building for plowing purposes. And the last item was the health officer uh, status. Originally, I thought we needed to prove that. Um, once we contacted uh, the state, the state actually is the one that controls the uh, appointment process. We make recommendations, they do the appointments. It's a three-year appointment. The only person that can remove a health officer from the town with cause is the, the commissioner for the Department of Health and Human Services. So that commission right now runs, or hit the appointment runs for April of 2023. So at this stage of the game, the three or four different legal issues we've got going on in that arena, and a couple of other things going on around town from a health safety standpoint, Mike's actually in charge of because it's it's his function. So there were a lot of people that were hoping he would go away because they thought that would derail the lawsuits. It's not derailing the lawsuits. They're proceeding forward 
for those areas where there's violation underneath the state health code and the town health code. So those are the nine items. This document we will put up on the website so anybody that wants to see it, copy it, share it, can do that. Yes, Joe. Um, I don't see Mike's name mentioned in that document. Um, Mike Holland has been approached to post town elections to determine if he would continue support and expertise to several town projects. Yeah, his name's clearly in it. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to give you the whole document. No, I, I, all but, right. But if, if that was um, decided, and I don't know if it was, but if you knew or decided that uh, a town meeting that should have been specified. When I left town meeting and the election process, I followed up with NHMA about three, maybe four days later to find out what could be done, if anything, to retain Mike to work on the projects, which he has been the sole lead on and has all of the information on from a town standpoint because there were too many things that would drop. We had potential to lose grants, the USDA grant on Snow Road Bridge, we had a chance to lose it. And basically I wanted to make sure that we didn't lose that grant nor any other grants that we had worked on. So that's why this was pulled together. And at the very next meeting, we had the discussion. So I'm hearing today that Lenny thought he was voting on something different. So I'm willing to revote it right now. See, this is where I get confused. All this selecting guidance. That's what I thought I was. Well, this on. you were in this document, you were voting on the document. Well, say I thought I was voting just on that part. Okay. The guidelines. Okay. Then we'll do a revote. I'll make a motion to adopt the document created on May 18th, 2021 which describes the NHA, NHMA process that the selectmen can use to have a volunteer citizen of the town continue to provide their expertise to the town. In that document, it does specifically mention that that person would be Mike Cahalan, and it does specify nine different projects or areas that he would continue to work on. It's not all inclusive. At a future point, other things could pop up. And if we deem we need his expertise, we'll discuss it and vote on it then. Those other items are not part of this document, but the process we would have to go through is part of this document. So I'll make the motion that we approve this document. I second. All in favor? Full or aye? Aye. I'm going to say no because I don't think he needs to be in charge of all of these. That is your prerogative. Yep. It passes two to one. Uh, and we will take this document and put it up on the website so that it can be shared and added. I will attach it to the when you Go back and listen to the minutes. I mean, the recording on that yeah. day because I specifically asked and this was okay. added as an attachment. I can do that. Because I knew we'd have this discussion. Okay. Anything that has to come on meet day ninety one a on public meeting? Yeah, but yes. yeah. I'm so I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I just have a question. Sure. I'm, I'm a little confused. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Rosemary was in back. Probably it's like that. Um, Mike, you're, you're going to need the spelling, aren't you? I have it on me now. Excellent. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused if it's Rosemary or Rosemary. It's Rosemary. When they set up my Gmail account at Verizon, okay. they put Rosemary. Okay. You know, to try to change it is, again, it's like just Okay, so Mike is the project coordinator. Correct. 
Okay. He said no decision. No, 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 I understand that. Too. Yep. My question is, as the project coordinator then, if these concerns, and I understand that you're comfortable with the engineer and HEB or whatever, but as the concerns are coming up, would they then be referred back to my guest, the coordinator, to say, hey, I, and I know he's already done, uh, Larry's already sent it to whoever, but as the coordinator, wouldn't it go to him to say, you know, Mike, these concerns came up, these are pictures here. Could you please go back and address these companies, HEB or the engineers, and get some answers for us so we can go back? Would that be the next? In a perfect step? world, that would be the way it worked. People decided to go directly to me, and that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But then I go back and talk to legal counsel, and I go through and follow up on some other things. And then I've been responding because the request came directly to me. In a perfect world, what you describe is exactly how it would work. I mean, to me, it would just make more sense as the coordinator, he should yep. be addressing this. Correct. So how do we get Mike to address it? Mike has an email address, a town email address. Okay. Mike, period, Taha. Wait, wait, wait. I can email it to you. Email it to me. Yeah. Okay. And if again, and each dog that. So, so then and the I reason just... the reason for that, Rosemary or Rosemary is everything that happens mm -hmm. i want to make sure from a transparency standpoint if somebody wants to do a 91a and say what happened here mm -hmm. we have it stored on the town server right. this has been a problem in the past for people using personal emails and everything none of that stuff was was stored and i made a big deal a year ago when we upgraded our technology part to make sure that whatever was happening in email addresses when stuff came in the town email address on there that is basically retrievable if needed. No, that makes perfect sense. I mean, I don't have a problem with that at all. I just thought, thought that, you know, obviously someone should really be asking him. Mike's down there almost something. every single day. You know, I mean, if, if that's the concern, if that's a concern, I think that it should be addressed. And obviously, you, you can address it because you've already exhausted your, well, I should say, Larry has exhausted all of his efforts, the, the channels that he can go through at this point. So I think that if I, maybe I'll, I will definitely email Mike and, and if you ask, the concerns and, good. you know, please address this. And if you're looking for an answer on something that's going to require some kind of decision, here he knows well, that, it's going to come out. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, if I ask him a question, he has to come to you. Correct. To then report it because that's the chain of. Okay. That's correct. Okay. I it just <clears throat> it's getting very confused with who's contacting who and who's responsible for it. It just was getting confused. <laughs> well, no one questions during time. I've allowed everybody over five minutes. Um, work session is going to begin in about 10 minutes, 10 25. Today we're going to be looking at the transfer station ordinance and the brochure. Um, it needs to have some tweaks made to it based on the real world, what is arriving for disposal at the transfer station that was not originally captured in that document. So excuse me, that. excuse me, Chairman Fuller. Um, Selectman asked the ask for non-public yesterday. Proceed. Yeah. Oh, it's on the agenda. I was going to remind you before you get to that. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do the non public, and then anybody who wants to be part of the work session, you can come back in and you can sit here and listen to that. All right, you. So, under which 91A are you? Uh, C. C. Okay. C. Okay. Matters which, if discussed in public, would likely affect the person's reputation of any person other than a member of this board, unless such person requests an open meeting. That's the one. Uh, no, no, A. A, sorry. Employee. Employee. A. Oh, A. Sorry. The hiring of any person as a public employee. 91 A colon 3, subsection 2, paragraph B, as in Boston. I'll make a motion that we go into non public. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We'll go into a non public. Um, the
We're back. Okay, we're back. Um, public session reconvenes at 10.35 hours. A.M. 10.30 A.M. 10.35 A.M. Um, make a motion to seal the minutes. I'll second that. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. Good. And I'll give these minutes to. Oh, thank you. Finally. Okay, we're back in public. Board session time or transfer station ordinance for session time. Yeah. Let me grab Barbara. Okay. Did you want to discuss? We'll take five. Uh, yes, we'll take five minute recess. We can change out a couple people. Uh, we'll reconvene at 1042. Wow. Mm -hmm. About oh, 10.43. I could, yeah. Well, I'll do it five minutes. <laughs> okay. All right. Did you have any luck finding somebody to do the recycling for that woman? No. Or any ideas? No. All right. I'm going to call her today, let her know that I'm still working on, on it. That way that yeah. comes that comes every week. Where are you on? You're on camera, there, just saying so you know. Just put up here. You don't know anybody who does it for business, do you? Just uh, yeah. weight bill disposal. Okay. Yeah, this is going to some guy that did on the side. But is that a Freedom Bulletin Board? Someone might. The Freedom Bulletin Board is um, a Google Bulletin Board that will be online. People can respond. That's how I found out in the past. Thank you. You don't know, lose that that rock and the I don't know yet. I think you're talking one in the cemetery. Went right by yesterday. So. You're talking one in the cemetery or the no, fire city, fire city. We can have it in color mm -hmm. I got the old friend. Mm -hmm. All right. I said we'll talk on the health ordinance. Yeah, well, we're going to have some time here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, then. Well, then. Right, but I made a point to say it was mixed in is what I was told. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at the uh, work session and I missed a couple of things in this draft. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
session on the update of the transfer station um, ordinance. The, and what I did is I went through and I highlighted from my memory some of the points that you brought up. And I'm looking at the four session minutes and I missed a couple of pieces on there. So I want to walk down through this and take a look at it okay. and see if there's anything you said in there. So let's start with page two. Um, I do not have any change of travel. Uh, operation hours is still Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. Any questions on page two? Okay, page three. Uh, under item E Edward station permits. Uh, the beginning of the second line, it said permits may be purchased. I added the word numbered permits because we are now numbering them. Uh, so I want to make sure it's clear that they're numbered so that people are familiar with that. The numbers would be the total permits. Yeah, so when it, each permit yeah. is actually got a, a specific number on them. Uh, and when they take the information in the sale of it, they take down the name and the registration name on the report. Um, we had issues where we needed to go back and chase some stuff down, but we really couldn't do it. Um, item number three on the same page. Um, Item A, residents or taxpayers upon presentation. I deleted the whole last piece. No sticker color changes manually. We did previously discuss basically having anybody that wants a sticker and start getting ready to see something. Looks like you purchased a sticker, you purchased a sticker. Um, and that's all I have for changes on that particular page. Page four, um, same item in paragraphs uh, B, C, and D, um, or in my copy, B, C, and D. And so the year round residence, again, no sticker color, take it out. Um, the next paragraph down is highlights Memorial Day, Columbus Day. I'm going to take that verbiage out to start seasonal slash short term related family. And at the end of that, uh, in the middle of that paragraph, again, note sticker color is red and we'll take that out. And then I added a clarification point as an example family and extended related family using a seasonal building throughout the spring dash summer dash fall season, <coughs> season months. So it gives people an indication of where we're hoping to have them use that sticker if they fit that definition. And then down at the bottom under the please note, transfer station permit holders and their passengers are requested to and will conduct themselves in a civil manner. And I want to add, and with a civil tone of voice. So we're still getting some people that trash mouth and scream and all are dependent, so, which we are not going to allow. <laughs> So they have the transfer station have the attendance have the discretion because there's license underneath the PES to run that station. 
and we use the previous policy and I'm going to, I, I'd like to continue it. If somebody comes in there and they're acting disorderly and they're not following the policies, the attendants can kick them out, no trash or policy. All right. There's a few of them. Yeah, I, we'll have a whole lot less than we had before. Yeah. Um, okay, so page four, that's all I have on that one. Um, page five. Um, I just saw last night, um, we we'll need to kind of address it. Um, I think the Lakes Region uh, household has this late day. Mm -hmm. is the 31st and something else, July 31st. Mm -hmm. So um, I filled this in a year ago based on my discussion with Bill Rabel, because he's kind of that point person for transportation. So I want to I want to check the wording on that one to see if we need to modify it a little bit. Because it's always been the first Saturday in August. Um, he asked me if finding where the band is going. As it's waste, because they added it to school last year. They were yeah. they and, were in that trailer right there. I mean, in that building right there. Yeah, saying they can't find it. In this says, building, well, they don't have them up there. You check down here. Yeah, they check there. Um, I said, well, check with the school. Maybe the no, school, the school didn't have them down there. Well, they had it at the school. So yeah. I said, maybe the janitor there took them down or something. No, I waited. Literally, when we got there, they were, they, we stood around while the company. That managed that, set the whole thing up, and then they took the whole thing down. So we didn't, we didn't bring anything to the table last year for that. They brought everything. Um, we had the banners at the transfer station. Yeah, they had one transfer station. But that was, that was it. So what, what uh, is he looking for another I think it similar was, uh, one to the transfer station? I believe that's it they were looking. I think we were supposed to open the trees down the foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, um, all right, let's find I don't know that that was a little while ago, so they may have found it. All right, well, check on it if you can. Yeah. And, if, and if we're how many do we need? Um, I, I do like that big one we used to set down there right, right in the tree line. Um, and I know we like to poke some stuff up in the bottom back as well. So, now uh, we have the sun, someone over to Austin. Um, but man, that's what Bill normally does. Yeah, Bill normally goes over there. He's kind of coordinator of that whole thing for us. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll have to see how his situation is. Um, yeah, but this is a Saturday, so I think we would be in good shape. That's not on our Sunday. So we can ask. Well, I yeah, no, I mean, if it's a case we can't do it, then one of us or one of them is going to the license. Right. Grant over or something like that. Um, and I'll verify the number just to make sure that the next region uh, organization address is correct and the uh, telephone number to call over there if people want more information. And then under F, um, I did a, a new one, um, an add on rather. So, dead animals, pathological waste, medical waste, radioactive waste, mm -hmm. sludge. Human or animal waste. <laughs> and then the sub one the diapers and cat were back to around the house and couch. So what I'm reviewing right now is when I shipped out to Audrey the other day and I copied the guys on my draft. You've got this right on in your email. No, just on uh, no. animal waste, yeah. Didn't we already okay the cat litter and all? It's just right there. Beggars and cat litter bags. Oh, so that's right. Number one. You got it, yeah. Beggars and cat litter bags is yeah. allowed in household trash. Right? Yeah. Yep, yep. That, and we need to put that there because I Originally didn't have it there in the United States and said, I'm oh, no, no, you need to people ask that question all the time. Okay. Yeah, like so you just moved number one up at the radioactive waste, right? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I added yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 eliminated number one and stuff in the name. Uh, other thing. Uh, I want to make sure that people are aware of you can't. All right, that page is done. That's five. Um, six. Um, page six. Uh, cell phones under A. Uh, companies like Eco ATM or Best Buy or your phone carrier may be able to. Uh, what I'm finding out is a lot of the stuff is changing on people who are willing or not willing to do. So these have been examples in the past, but. They can decide no longer to do it. So rather than say more of a yes, you can, it'll be maybe able to help. And then I've got a new number five underneath the payments of fees, which goes over on my other page. Um, and it basically says the attendant may at their discretion determine the appropriate amount of fee when there is no specific trash or demo item described in these policies, or if they deem due to the circumstances that a higher fee would be proven. We've always had that as a clause in here, but they had a problem with some people not reading it correctly. So this is like adding it in another place. And then under penalties, further down on page seven, um, the second line, any alleged violator may avoid the issuance of a summons and complaint by the voluntary payment of a fine and amount determined by the board of selectmen. I want to run this whole paragraph by the chief, police chief. I'm not sure we can legally do that. We need to make sure we can get this stuff. Because how would you know what to pay if you weren't receiving the complaint or something from the chief or the police department? I just need to understand. You might have to reward that section. Um, and then let me these penalties that were in here. So basically, when I did the surrounding town survey and stuff, put everything into the spreadsheet, these were consistent numbers with a lot of people, a lot of towns around us. But if we need to modify the amount of times, we can do that too. And then something I didn't do on page eight, under the effective page, I need to add the revise. Which would be one of the data between the ordinance after a public hearing. Um, okay, then we get into Schedule A, which is all the stuff that's out there. So I think I got. Um, Long horse tractors, couch, sleeping sofa. I, I made question marks on that one. Gas grills broken down. I think I forgot that one. Furnace and boilers and water heaters. I got that. Um, with removal of refrigerator doors prior to drop off. I think that's in there, but we need to reference that and make sure. All right. So I'm going to step away. Um, category one would is no recycling fee uh, required. This this is an item where if we're going to do charge for boilers and we're going to charge for um, other metal components, we're going to have to modify this section. It'll probably be more of the modification with the exception of and we just list what we said we about. Mm -hmm. Grills and furnace boilers and whatever. No, that's that makes sense. Yeah. That? That's on the one, D1. Hey, uh, number one, Three. item A category. Right. 
we're just we're going to leave that and something in there but with the exception of these items which are chargeable on the next pages i forgot to put that one in there okay class um this is what this is consistent language with pretty much everybody around us um and i don't think there's any reason to change any of the class items based on feedback from the attendance Number three, aluminum tin steel cans. That's standard cardboard. Number four, that's standard. And we were asked to put a note, no pizza boxes in the cardboard recycling because of potential contamination of food, stains, and other things. If a pizza box is in that load or they see that in that recycling load, it becomes a contaminated load and our whole price on that entire load go way up just for one box. So no pizza boxes in the recycling. Who use pizza in that pizza? Hmm? Who use pizza in that pizza? No, what happens is you don't know, yeah, the oil. Oil. Yeah. Oil. Sometimes it's sometimes cheese and other things that are left in there. Some people leave the crust in there. Can't do it. Uh, grocery bags, brown, brown paper bags, yep, yeah. newspaper. Um, this is where we talk about the soft cover books, not hard cover books. Um, hard covers on the hand go demo. Um, next page plastics. This is the language that's in the flyers that we normally have from uh, waste manager. So recycle numbers one, two, and five are what we do in recycling. Smoke detectors. Not disposed of in the town trash or demo dumpster. Contact the station attendant. They actually have a process for that. I believe they put them in that shed and then Bill takes them over and have those types of things. Um, category B uh, again, non recycling but no fit. Household waste, which is basically household trash within the trash compactor. Um, Alkaline batteries, regular light bulbs, gift wrap, carbon paper, wax, or drink, foil cartons, saran wrap, Tyvek envelopes, etc. Um, textiles, used clothing should be, and I've taken out place in the Planet A yellow containers because they no longer exist. Mm -hmm. Take it away. So what I did is I reworded it. Used clothing should be given to a local charity. Um, clean wooden brush, this is from our previous policy, under five feet, five inches in diameter. Medical waste, um, basically contact the Department of Environmental Services uh, for the public disposal tips. And I think we included that is one of the attachments on this thing. Um, oh, I did. Yeah, yeah, I did. So the, the question I have here is I literally cut this down from the DES site. We just need to verify it's still the same document. If not, we'll just change it out. So I'll look that up and do that. Could we re, re appendix that? Because it's appendix A and that's what we're on. Oh, yeah. It, or it's, yep, you are correct. No, it's Schedule A. So there's two different names Schedule okay. A and Appendix A. I guess it's all right. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, clean wood brush slash chippings leaves. That's standard. Metal waste we just covered. Hardcover books. Are we just focused up in the uh, demo waste dumpsters? And then we get category two fees required. Um, acceptable payment at the transfer station is cash only. Um, coupons may be purchased for these items at the Sarkman's office. Uh, I don't know how we do that. Let's see here, it says doors. Uh... Yeah, I know. Remove, but in the 
a little flyer, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, I want to kind of visit that coupons purchase because I don't know how the person can determine what the actual load was to get inspected by the um, No, what they do is like if they get a refrigerator, yeah. they can come here and buy a pay their money and get it deep on the sticker. It says they can deposit the refrigerator. Right. But but that's the only thing. They one of the things that they had Bill asked me to do allow them to be able to charge a higher price for somebody that doesn't remove the doors. Apparently, the bulk of them coming in, the doors are on. And right now, because of the way we've got it worded, they're taking them in for that, that fee. And he said, can we charge a higher fee if we have to take the doors off? So, I don't know. Well, why we didn't allow that? Well, we could refuse it if we're all there. Yeah. I'm sorry. We could refuse it. Without the doors off? I'm right. good with that. I'm good with that. We can do that. Yeah, I just saw it's in the brochure. Yeah, no, yeah, but we in here too. Sure, right. But that's not the policy. Right, right. That's a that's a high level piece of material. Yeah, I know. But how many people are actually going to read all this in town? And basically, Mark has several copies there. So the people were trying to get into arguments about that, he has the entire policy because it says right on it that is not the only document on the brochure. The only document is the ordinance. Yeah, I, I get that. I was just trying to give people a heads up that take the doors off. Um, yeah, no, no. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. no, I like what you did. We'll just tell the guys. Um, well, you highlight the mops. Yeah. Uh, Refrigeration freezes. Mops. Okay. I'm going to actually make that in bold. Yeah. Uh, I'll make it capital in bold. And I originally had. Something else in there around the tenants being able to charge a higher price for it. I'll take that right out. Okay, I like that one. Okay, um, <clears throat> then under bulky waste, so one of the questions that came in was couches versus uh, sleep sofas with recliners. Um, so we had already said couches were built in recliners were 10 bucks. The guy had basically saying because of the nature of the weight of those, we should look at a higher number. And we've got in here couches. Um, to me, a built in recliner is also a sleeper. Yeah, a lot of that one. So I'm just what I'm proposing to be 20, like sofa beds. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um that so couch sofa. Um <coughs> Okay, and next one over. Uh, box springs, rugs larger than eight by ten. All right, then I added the, the next category three uh, in that same one that says lawn mowers, cushion guiding mowers. I got a cushion mowers emptied of both oil and gas, twenty bucks. Guiding mowers emptied of both gas and oil, thirty bucks. Bill is comfortable with those kinds of numbers. Yeah, that's what he suggested. Um, water heaters and steel furnaces and boilers. Item A, water heaters, $30. B, steel furnaces and boilers, $30. Those are also his recommendations. So the, these two categories of mowers and, and furnaces, we've never had anything. Um, there have been some people that have been trying to come in and dump five or six furnaces at a time because they basically use enough of their commercial disposal for the businesses. And I believe we stopped at least one of those last year by maintaining the person the policy. So tires uh, up to 20 inches, $3 each. That's this is consistent with other towns. Uh, a six tire limit per visit. 
Um, we've done this because we don't want anybody walking in with 100 tires and saying, here you go. Uh, we don't have space for them. I did find out that the tires have to be put in the container because if they're outside and they fill up with water, you get charged a different way. Mm. Yeah. So it's like that's what that's why we're limited in the storage we can use for a lot of tires. Plus it keeps on its side. Oh, that's true too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, asphalt shingles and construction debris demolition. Um, there was no recommendation by the Guys down there in changing this because it, it's been working. The only thing that they did request, it's been a discussion I've heard of because it's specifically right here, that only um, one of these loads, like full, that load, would come in because some people clean it out how to bring it over four or five and, and fill up. That's the next guy, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I'm thinking putting a limitation on one per weekend um, would be the way to do it. Yeah, I think they're, they're telling the people one per day. One per day? Yeah. I'm good with that. As long, and they know how fast the film from and yeah. again. So if it's one per day, I'm good with that. And then the clarification. Uh, computer monitors and flats, uh, TVs, flat screen TVs, 10. Um, actually, there's actually nothing in there for computers. Computers, tablets, etc. 10. I'll do what I didn't see on that one. Well, can we just say computers and monitors? We can do that. Too. Okay. It, uh, it says computer monitors. Yeah. So people look at that and like, oh, it's only the screen. Right. Not the tower. But, or... but I like what you just said right now. Computer monitors are computer. And computers monitors. and monitors. Okay, and keep the same price tag in there on that one. Uh, oh, yeah. In the very next one, I had a new ad online that said current holders will be allowed one pickup truck, bed of demo materials per day. So, in the note paragraph, right underneath this one, adding in a new second sentence, mm -hmm. which basically put money into stuff. Uh, and waste management actually has a, a Baxter program that they will actually they actually have it available in in Evergreen. It's like a once a week pickup. Um, category B, uh, and item D, category three turn pile materials. Uh, this was the standard language out of what we had last time. <laughs> Same thing with the next uh, brush piles, compost piles. Um, use the medicine to go patients. Uh, I will verify that these websites are still pointing people in these directions. You know, Austin TV, don't they have theirs open all the time? Maybe. No, I think I'm both of them. Lobby, right? Yeah. Lakeville, too, I believe. Yeah, yeah I think Lakeville. Will, 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 will they take everybody or just yeah. within their town? No, I think they'll take Because that's a, I just want to get them off the state. Yeah. yeah. It takes it back. Austin and Wolfville? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know where? Is it a PD? Yeah, it's a PD. A PD? Yeah. I think they're they're there all the time. Uh, Austin, I think Austin's only in certain hours. So that's okay. Well, yeah. What I'll do is I'll put down Austin PD, call ahead. Joe, I'm actually going to have to check. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first thing I did. Verify, I'm Joe. 
Not the Wakefield one. That's the very far Wakefield too. But then you got people on that side. I think they have closest to Wakefield. I don't know about hospital. I do this on Memorial. Do they know about it? I don't either. I'd like to get them off, but take them back and they know. <clears throat> Yeah, you're paying on the light bulb. Nobody wants it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I'll take a drugstore pharmacy. Like that. All right. Yeah, I'll verify those and I'll, and I'll reach out to John and ask him to verify. Yeah. Right. I mean, all games might. They, I think most of them do. That's why we put on a contact from the pharmacy. Drugstore. Waste to be transferred. Um, and then the effective schedule. Okay. Um, so we need a uh, revised public hearing date. And then a revised all. Now, the thing I didn't capture is gas grills. I really need to see gas grills. Uh, long time while well, I'll, I'll add a. So on page 11 on mine, coming off page 10. So we got white goods, bulky waste. Lawn mowers, water heaters, I'll add in barrel uh, controls. And I don't know. So you say it's assembled grills? Because it's a kind of assembled. Right? Well, that's that's why I'm going. Yeah, that was actually, yeah, that's good. My question. <laughs> Price tag on the bill to spend an hour. <laughs> yeah, what did he say? I know he said something, but I don't remember what it was. Hold on. What's so? We could add that underneath steel plumbers and boilers. Yeah. So steel wood soles, right? Yeah, he said long tractors and molds, fifteen dollars. I put twenty. Um, I put and I, I put twenty on the push. I'm good for fifteen, but the riding one because we have to take it all apart. Oh no, wait a minute. Grills thirty dollars. Yeah, long tractors, grills for thirty dollars. Okay. Regular molds for fifteen. Okay, then I'll change what my notes were on the mower that I had coming up with that. Mowers already had 30 water heaters, boilers, furnaces, and steel wood stoves will be for environmental grill stuff. I'm steel wood stoves. We're not very sure. We're going to pay the part of steel wood stoves, right? It's a bulk item. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of the only chart. All right. Okay. And now verify that I said that in the yes button. Okay. And then the brochure. I'm sure you guys had specific comments that take this out and put this in. And I didn't write that down. Well, textile is cool, it's going to change anyway. Yeah. We've got a, the lawnmowers and stuff, they want to make sure there's no oil or gas. And I did put that in what I had okay. in here. Right. Um, let's see. Okay, so we need to catch these. 
So we want it. They wanted mowers added to this document, right? This social. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and the both which are coming out of the I'm not sure we can add too many lines in there without shrinking the file on this through. Mm. I'll see if we can add a couple more lines under the bulk to get some there. Those things. Um, the bulk's going to go down so it can slide underneath the white ones on. So we can add in there towards the move. And what we can do is put uh, no additional feed and recycling. We can just get rid of that and have something there. Uh, yeah, didn't they want to put down, didn't they want to add on here the station? Yes, they had the final say. Let's put it down. Actually, we're getting rid of that. Uh, we could add this annual permit year up to the permit fee. Give us a line here. Yeah. Permit fees, yeah. you know, dollar and June 1st and May 3rd. Yeah. The tenants may open uh, any bags or yeah. do you want to look at the details? And the motor oil, as soon as we get the capability for that, I'll we'll just modify this to put cash on the stores. I believe the way I'll check on this, but I believe the way we structured it on this one, the town, we actually did add an ordinance or did add a policy that the town could receive fines and payments since we've never had that before. And let's verify that that's still there. Let's see if I can refer to it. Here we talk about it. And they just look at it in the, the ordinance itself right now. Um, because of the comments, I don't know where we'll put it yet, but um, I'll add something that says that the brochure is, is a summary of the policy that consult the ordinance for the details. Okay. All right. Anything else? Is there anything else that should be on this one that's from what the folks on the station said? Mm -hmm. 
Um, and that's what all the stuff they gave you. I'll make these changes before we do anything with them. We give them this and we give them the ordinance. Very nice. Take a look at it. And then, is there anything you want to take off or add it on? Do any of them have any old load types up there? Is that a whole different disposal process? Well, it says we don't take it. Yeah, I shouldn't have it. We don't have the capability. Okay. Cool. And we'll grab that one. Okay. Um, next item help ordinance. Would you guys review in front of us? Uh, review it all. No, all right. Did you, did you uh, I'm going to ask Audrey if we can get somebody to do a simple word document. This is like it was printed on a typewriter years ago. Yeah. And it doesn't exist anywhere but this PDF that was used years ago. So we'll, we'll redo that and I'll actually send it out to each one of us. And then we'll just put this on one of the Depending on what it is, either the next little session or one after that, uh, or we review it. I did talk to, uh, so this was done in September of 2002, uh, in Bill Pike, just like another time and signed it. I reached out to Bill and asked him if he wanted to copy and said he didn't think so. Um, and basically, he tried to use Policy behind why they did it. I mean, we look at this whole thing, it's talking about the septic system and gray water and the soil and stuff. So apparently, they had a similar problem back then with this policy. So, one of your takeaways was to try and reach out to public in towns to find out. And we're all using, I don't know if you remember, but we actually interviewed him. Right, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's the one towns up there. But uh, I so I called Mike on this too, and he actually has a manual that goes to the help officer. But I think if we got a hold of that, I think we might get things in there that would get out of the whole of it. Um, so. he, I know we can get a digital version of that. Um, ask him if he's got a digital version. If not, as a help officer, can he get a digital version of it so that we could basically? Use it as a reference for the okay. I'm sure. I'm sure based on the whole DES uh, stuff with water and ground, this and that, it's this stuff has to be updated. Mm -hmm. Some of it's probably not even applicable anymore. It's stuff probably is. We don't have any of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I only remember Mr. Evans, Frank Edwards, when he was in here. He also said, We need any help down the road. We give him a call. I don't know if he might be helpful to us in a similar session. You can reach out and find out what his yeah. offer translates to. Yeah. Because we can, still, yeah. Yeah, we can say to us something like in July, right. or just, you know, wait, work session, you know, and we'll go over it. Ordinance regulating disposal systems and local enforcement procedures. Okay. So that that's kind of this stuff that says nothing else. Yeah, it just says yeah. And when I try to go into a couple of the other towns and look at what you know, bigger towns like Durham or uh Wilker or something like that, they have commingled building codes and all kinds of stuff as part of the whole world package. Mm -hmm. And they've got full-time people that are just managing that. This one's only this one's kind of limited. It's a specific universal septic systems and or this is on that. So, we do need to update this. Okay. All right. All right. Um, and that's what I had to work on the work session. Um, probably, we want Randy in at the next work session to discuss his letter and the process that we want to use for 
choosing the required Yeah, I assume you better get on it. So, uh, I'll ask think. I think he told me that he couldn't make it this Tuesday. Tuesdays are bad for you. Well, two Tuesdays. Okay. I think his wife had the doctor's appointment, one PC. Jonathan had the doctor's appointment, the other PC. But I don't know if it was, I can't remember if it was last Tuesday and this Tuesday or this Tuesday. We'll go into well, I just, we'll I just go read my notes and yeah. realize it was always the start of the Christmas meeting last night. <laughs> I guess I'm going to pay more attention. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they know you got one man that's all you have to No, they didn't actually. It was a great thing on last week. She said, Tom was a meeting. I said, Listen, Tom, it's not there anymore. When he goes, No, we didn't communicate with the same way. So, 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 so I got the wrap of the last No, night. no, no. They, kind of, they did apparently have um, a few questions that they want the selectmen to follow up on and discuss. And get back to them. So um, I can always write Susan and just say, hey, can you send me a mm -hmm. the question you have and we'll do all work? Uh, yeah, that yeah. yeah, more and more. So we'll see what we can do there. All right. So with Randy, let's, we'll try for something in July. And we'll just do one more session until we'll talk about what the process we're going to get for that. And I am going to ask you to pull the uh, Warren articles and stuff from four or five years back, six years back, that talked about how the police and the fire chief was going to be selected. In the process. So, you want to take a look at that and make sure you're not violating anything. The selectman appoint committee, if I remember right, the selectman gave committee to Interview everybody and then they make the recommendations. Like, that's why I want to take a look at it because I want to do an independent review board, like call the state fire marshal's office, find out if there are three people that could sit on a review board, and then we put together the requirements of the job. I think uh, he chose Randy. I think it was Mike Brownell, who was the chief in Santa Rosa. <clears throat> But that's what that that's what we're dealing with. That that's that's the kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it's like people not in town, right? So they, they haven't got any axe to grind on where they are. Three independent people that are in that business, so they understand. I can't, was, I can't remember if there was one selected. So, I can't remember. What about a citizen? There could have been a citizen, and I don't remember. Yeah, and I think there's something to sell up it's in that process. Yeah, I think it is. So. That's why I want him to yeah. you know, bring those documents to the table and let that discussion. If I can get him ahead of time, it'd be easier if we had him speak with him before the meeting. We can ask questions on that, and then we can we can start whatever that process is. To I have to ask one person said they really have to. Good. Yeah. Good. So, um, I guess I'll, I'll work on asking Ray to do that and work through life. First of the third week of July, probably the third week of July. It's been around all of us. Yeah, but I think it should be kind of a priority for us. I, yeah, we need to get on it. Yeah. I just want some, we know what the last one took off. Yeah. The new boards and all the other stuff. So yeah. make sure we're way ahead of it. One thing I can bring up with the transfer station July 4th is a Sunday. So we gotta make sure everybody knows the Sunday goes. When is it Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. It is on Sunday? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we need to put that up there anyway. Yeah, that's one yeah, holiday they haven't changed yet. Okay. Yeah, well, that's why I mean, after that mental list, I go, they've changed everything else on Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mark, you went? I looked at the camera. I want to post it up there on the site that one of those transportation posting. Yeah. National Florida. Yes. Okay. Anything else for today? No, we take just break into a two. Two. Yeah. We're back here to. Oh, we're not. A journey. With this. No, I would say yeah. we, we get out of this little journey. This one. Yeah. 
Well, we will be again. Oh, you will. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think because I believe it's advertised. Um, in the CMA I, I don't know what I think, yeah. Oh, what's that? It's my thought. Okay. Um, I made a motion to adjourn at 11 30 a.m. Yes. Wait a second. Second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Uh, thank you very much, folks. I'm going to take right off. Tell me when I'm going the wrong way. Hold on a second.